time doing. Um, but I wanted to tell a quick story, uh, a really, really funny story that I'll be telling my old mates later, which I thought was hilarious. And it was to do with the radio show um, that I do on Fridays in Newcastle. We run a, a show called Mentally Sound, which you can find on Twitter for those that are interested. Um, but there was a really, really funny story about one of the guests uh, that happened, which I thought was really, really funny. Uh, so basically, just to give you the context, there was a guy uh, who was meant to be a guest on our show in the first segment. So I do the scripts and I produce this show. So I dedicated some time to say, right, okay, we'll do 10, 15 minutes uh, where my co-host will interview this guy. Uh, I think it was coming from Durham or something like that. So a little bit quite far away from Newcastle, but 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 doable. Um, so I, our, our show was starting at two o'clock in the afternoon. So it gets to like quarter two to 10 to two and he's like, he's not there. And I'm, so I'm a little bit annoyed because I'm like, well, what do we do? You know, that's, you know, it's a little, it's a little obviously shit when, when, a, when a guest is supposed to turn up and then doesn't. So what we end up doing is we, luckily one of our guests who was due later in the show turns up on the time that the show starts. So we bump him up to be, to be the first guest. So if the guest decides to, t if he does turn up late or we can figure out what we're going to do with the segment that the second guest was supposed to be in because now he's being bumped to replace the guy that should have turned up at the beginning. So we're like, we'll deal with it later. So so we do the show and it's going really, really well. Um, and it's a two hour show and it gets to about 10 to three. And the guy who's supposed to be the guest who was friends with our co-host runs into the radio station and goes, oh, there you are, thank God, I can't, I'm so, so, so sorry, I'm so sorry I'm late, I'm all this kind of stuff. And we're like, okay, like, and we're like, you know, this is a little bit ridiculously late, so what the hell happened? So I'm in the middle of obviously recording and, and, and broadcasting the show, so I wait until one of the breaks, and I'm like, so we're all like gathering around him going, what the hell happened, where have you been? Thinking it'll be like, oh, it was traffic, or the train got cancelled, or delayed, or whatever it is, and he went, Oh no, no, I've been in the building the whole entire time. We all looked at each other like kind of really puzzled and like, you've been in the building the entire time yet none of us have seen you. Where the hell have you been? And he went, well, I went up, I went up one step, I went up to floor four. And we were like, well, this is floor three. So why did you go to floor four? And he went, well, I, I've never been to the radio station before. I thought that's where it was. And I'm like, well, well, hang on a minute. If you went to floor four and saw it was not a radio station, and that you never saw any of us. Why were you still at floor four all that time? And, he, and then he explained to us this story. What he ended up doing, right? And it's it sounds horrible, but it's also hilarious at the same time. Is that what he ended up doing was he went up to the floor. And this was like a refurbishment room where you get food and drinks and stuff. And we sometimes, the radio station uses it and you can hire it out. So he walked into this room, like knocked on the door, person answered and said, oh, you must be, you must be here for such and such. I don't know what they actually said to convince him that he was in the right place, but he just assumed it was the right place. And they went in and what he didn't realize was he had joined a wake for this person who had died. And so he thought <laughs> that the people, the wake, it like happened suddenly at the radio station and we all were we all were like saying goodbye to this person. So we thought we were part, the, the, all these guys were part of the radio station. So he's like, during the whole like 40 minutes he was there, he was just pretending he knew this guy. Like he was going, so like those people coming up and going, so how long, how long did you um know the deceased? And he's like, and he's like, yeah, oh, a long time. Yeah, it was, you know, I was like, oh, I, or like, he, I don't, I, or he was also like, sometimes he'd be like, oh, I didn't know very well, but you know, I just came up to you, show my respects and all that. And he, you know, he didn't just have the courage to say like, I'm, but, but you kind of think, would you do that in that scenario? Would you kind of just go, actually, I, I'm really sorry, but I do not know this person at all. And I'm really sorry, but I went to the wrong place. But no, he did the whole, I'll go along with it because I thought these were the people I was meant to be seeing. And then he went along, he, he then went and came and saw us like 40 minutes later. So he just like had to pretend that he knew this guy, that he had no idea who it was, what his name was or anything. And these guys saying goodbye to this guy. Um, oh, and we were just, we were cry like, we went for it. We went for a, um, a drink afterwards and we were crying just cause it was so hilarious. He was so shocked and like relieved that he'd found the place. Like he thought like we'd, and I wouldn't be surprised if we thought we'd like did a practical joke on him that we'd all like sent him up there deliberately, but no, it was a complete accident. But 
I don't know, I just was like, what would you do in that scenario? I have no idea. Like, you know, just sort of... I, I, I imagine I probably would have just had the guts to say, I'm really sorry, but I'm in the wrong place. Like, you know, I, I don't know this person and I'm, my condolences, but no. I don't think I would have went on a 40-minute pretense that I knew the person and just, like, show my respects. You know, I obviously would be upset of someone dying because he always should be, but just this idea of bullshitting your way to going, yeah, oh, yeah really did know this person yeah i know him really well he actually was friends with friends with my grandma you know actually i don't know if you knew but like they were quite an item at some point and they're just like you know but what could you you could end up saying stuff that would be really detrimental like you know yeah oh yeah i remember i also remember that time that um you know he was a pimp for a while and um my grandma was like that's when things went down. yeah and he's and be like what so um it's just you know, it's like my f Gareth, who was the produce producers the show, was like, I'm not too sure we should be laughing at that. And I'm like, I, I totally think you should. I think it's just obviously a a, a terrible um, a terrible accident, but it was pretty funny. <laughs> and you just should have... I wish you were there to have seen the guest's face. I'll not say his name for benefit of... of um, uh, I'll, I'll do what Day 9 does and we'll have a generic name for, for these people. So let's call him John, because that's I know several, like loads of Johns. So yeah, let's, let's call this guy John, but John was very, very flustered and very, very like, oh my God, what have I just done? So he was really relieved and we managed to fit him in, so it all worked out. But yeah, it was just, that was super funny. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just, I have to restart, um, I have to restart Dungeon Keeper, so bear with me a second because it just was being a pain in the arse, but I thought I'd tell that story because I'll be telling my friends later and I imagine we'll be laughing hysterically about that because it was incredibly funny um but there you go so anyway back on to dungeon keeper but yeah oh i was that was so funny i was i was crying with laughter when i heard about that